Come on, man. Again? Yeah. You give me this little baby controller and you got the wind stick? Win. My house, my rules. You know what? I am bored. You're done? Yeah. Look. Is there something we can do? Something else? Well, I'm tired of losing. Sarah's doing that sleepover party in the night at the wandering house. We could go and crash it. I'm into that. Yeah? Plus, I like wine. All right, let's go check it out. All right, let's go. All right. This should be a good party. I can't wait. Did you see smoke? That is definitely smoke. Do you have a big family? No. And it's Bob. <laughs> Yay! Sarah, what is this? This party just got interesting. Yeah! I think they're vampires. What? Did you say vampires? Mike, I'm not kidding. Okay, okay, hold on. We'll tell leader we're coming in. Such a good idea. Night Trap for the Sega CD. Circa October 1992. Um, I was a freshman in high school. Were you really? Yes, I was. Actually, um, you know, I, I believe you're right. you were too. Yeah, I was a freshman in high school. I totally forgot about that. My only experience with Night Trap is uh, I never owned it personally, it was not part of my Sega CD collection but I would come over to your house every now and then and play it a few times. Very frustrating, as I remember it, having to replay the stuff all the time, but uh, the different scenes just keep replaying them. And I never got that very far. So, uh, but you own the game. I so did. So what, what was your experience with Night Trap? Well, Night Trap I was very excited about. We actually, my brothers and I, uh, paid for it ourselves. It was the first video game system that we ever bought. We had the Model 1, it was on launch day, and Night Trap was one of the launch titles. We got that, the Sewer Shark, and uh, well, it came bundled with Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Very, that's one of my top 10. That's one of your top 10. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I, I was trying to buy, I mean, side note, Sherlock Holmes, uh, we, we got to the first, you know, the case of the mummy, and I still remember the opening. London is not a beautiful city. And I, we can still recite it line for line to this very day. Um, and you admit that. Uh, of course I do. I mean, I can, re I can <laughs> recite lines from Sewer Shark. I can recite almost every line from Night Trap. Honestly, I think my love of B cinema, of the really crappy cinema, stemmed from this video game. Well, speaking of the B movies, the game came out in 1992, but mm -hmm. it was actually filmed in the mid 80s, which was the height of a lot of the B movies that we remember as children. That's right, it was originally called Scene of the Crime and was uh, made for, for VHS tapes for the uh, ill-fated Nemo system. Which was developed by Rob Fulop, who got a start with Atari and was actually part programmer and uh, 
you know, games like Missile Command and uh, Space Invaders. He did Demon Attack also. Yes. And he ended up actually being the creator of the Dogs and Cats series, which he later sold to Ubisoft. And oh, uh, pets. became Pets. With a Z. Yes. Thanks, thanks, Philip. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> Think of the children. <laughs> you know, I had how much I had to talk my daughter out of. I was like, she's just like, I want pets. I want pets. We have dolphin pets and dog pets and cat pets. I want pets. And we were at the game store, my local video game store. And uh, I was like, here, try Mario. And being the awesome father it is that I am, uh, my daughter trusted me, slapped in Mario, has not played a pets game since. Night Trap was also the centerpiece of the offensive video game content, the whole reason for the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, the ESRB. Yeah. Night Trap and Mortal Kombat and Doom were all part of, you know, people saying uh, video games are bad and look at the violent content in it, we gotta do something. And so the vi video game industry went ahead and made this this self-governing rating system themselves, much like the Motion Picture Association of America did, the MPAA. And it worked. It's actually considered one of the best rating systems Absolutely, out there, yeah. it's, uh, for, especially for self-governing video games right now. Anywho, my video game experience with Night Trap was, uh, I just remember having a, a huge notepad, this uh, enormous oversized notepad, that we would have all the times and where the color changes were, you know, yeah, like that. And which button to press. And we would play it over and over and over again. And as we got further and further along, to know exactly what room to be in to trap which auger, and sometimes you would wait for the red line to eke up a little bit, hit that button, and then before you even see the trap go off, as long as you know you hit it, you're already switching to the next one to hit another guy. And some of my favorite one-liners came from these games, like, uh, Vampires, you gotta be jabbing me. The two augers high-fiving each other after Dana Plato walks out. I'll be right back. This is one of the funniest moments because they are these weird supernatural creatures and all of a sudden here they're like, yeah! <laughs> I didn't think that they were supernatural at all, especially when the guy's latex. <laughs> falls off on the ground. And he like grabs a big hunk of it and it just like sits yeah. there. Yeah, I was bored to tears, and I, and I was, and I was a fan of Dana Plato being a fan of different strokes, and uh, I I was really you know disappointed, especially wearing that uh, sports bra as a <laughs> as legitimate outerwear, just hanging out, you know, Pretty much. wearing a sports bra. Yeah. I think it was like a blue tie-dyed sports bra, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> like that, not even tie-dyed stonewash. Eventually, Night Trap came out because uh, on the Sega CD system, Sega was looking for uh, these new kind of experiences and the VHS thing, and so uh, this producer, Tom Zito, came along and said, I will bring this game. Yeah, Tom Zito was actually part of the crew that, you know, I think he, I believe he produced it. The original footage for the Nemo that they scrapped, and uh, he bought up all the rights for it, put it in a warehouse, and uh, kept it until the Sega CD came along. And he saw this uh, new form of entertainment. It's like that would be great for the CD. So that was five years later. It basically sat in limbo for five years, yeah. and until it finally came out, yeah, which when, was really cool. When Dana Plato was at the height of her career, right? <laughs> I think actually at the same time with a straight face. So Tom Zito continued to make games through the '90s. He made uh, Double Switch which had uh, Corey Haim and uh, Deborah Harry from Blondie and Arlie Emery in it. He also made Prize Fighter and Corpse Killer. And the uh, Make My Video series with NXS, Marky Mark, CNC Music Factory. I actually, I am not proud to say I used to play the Marky Mark one in an ordinary amount of times. <laughs> there I wasn't did. a lot of software for this system. <laughs> I did too. Because <laughs> the video was fat. <laughs> it was fat, it was pretty fat. Make my video. Make, make my, 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 my video skate. Peace. I'm out like shout. Another one of the packing games uh, that Tom Zio had put in was Sewer Shark, which is known for being ridiculously hard. Um, I beat it, but it wasn't until literally like three years ago that I finally beat the game. <laughs> You're still playing that game. <laughs> Every now and then I pop in my Sega CD game. That's I like say You're like playing it in the dark with her. I'm not home. It's like porn. <laughs> 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 Actually, I can attribute playing that Marky Mark to my uh, ripped physique today. Night Trap has its place in history, what with being a catalyst for the Entertainment Software Ratings Board. While it may not be for everybody, it will always hold a very dear place in my heart. I loved it. And I did. <laughs>